Well, Sarah, thank you very much, and thank you so much, Andrew, for joining us today. You were head of the division that actually handled this investigation, but since the settlement was announced, there has been a lot of concern from Capitol Hill, from consumer groups, from some of your own colleagues here at the FTC, that this fine is essentially just a drop in the bucket for a company like Google. What do you say to that? So this is an historic fine for a privacy case by anybody's standards. This is uh, 30 times higher than our highest previous COPPA settlement. It's uh, more than 10 times the amount of all of our COPPA penalties combined in the last 31 cases that we've brought. It's three times higher than the highest privacy penalty that any regulator anywhere in the world has gotten against Google. So this is, this is historic. I understand the concern that it's not enough to provide deterrence, but I think that what we'll see is that in addition to this historic fine, we also have strong injunctive relief that will, um, that, that, that will provide Google and the marketplace with the guidance that it needs to comply. You've called this settlement game-changing uh, because YouTube will be the first platform that is actually held accountable and held liable for some of the content that's posted on its site. Why do you think that is so significant? So this is the first case of its kind under the Children's Online Privacy Protection Act holding a platform responsible for the content posted on the platform by others. So in our copper rule, it is illegal for a content creator, for someone who runs a website or an online service that they know is child-directed, for them to collect uh, personally identifiable information from the users of that online service or website. But if you're a platform, it's not enough that the content be child-directed. You have to have actual knowledge that the content is child-directed before you can be held liable for collecting information under COPPA. In this case, we had strong evidence that YouTube actually knew that many of the channels on its site were appealing, were directed to children, therefore COPPA liability. First time we've ever brought a case against the platform for the, for the content posted by, by, by user-generated content. Andrew, we've got a question for you from Wilfred back in New York. Uh, Elon, thank you. Hey, Andrew, what, what recourse do you have to increase uh, the punishment if this happens again or is done by uh, one of Google's uh, peers or rivals? So we can enforce this order against Google or YouTube, right? So it's FTC versus Google and YouTube. Um, in addition, we can enforce our Children's Online Privacy Protection Act um, against any platform. In terms of increasing, uh, increasing the punishment, um, I don't concede that the punishment here was inadequate. I think that it is consistent with our prior cases, uh, with our prior COPPA cases. It's consistent with the penalties that we sought and obtained in those cases. It just happens to be so much larger because YouTube is so much larger. Um, but I do think that this is a penalty that sends a strong message to the marketplace, and I have to respectfully disagree with the detractors. So and there's another question the from wheel. Sarah Eisen in New York. I've, I've pulled up, Andrew, the wheels on the bus by Little Baby Bum on YouTube. It has 2.2 billion views. I mean, how, as an agency, can you enforce and police YouTube and take their word for it that they're not going to bait kids into ads with so many views when they're selling to advertisers that they have this behavioral data for, com for consumers and so many kids watch? So there's uh, a lot bound up in that question. The first thing is, though, that we are not taking Google's word for anything. Um, in this order, we require Google to, to, um, to require all of their channel owners to designate whether the content is child-directed or not. And we also will continue our enforcement and investigation of Google and channel owners for compliance with the COPPA rule. So one thing to remember about COPPA is that it prohibits the collection of information, including persistent identifiers, from the users of child-directed content. It does not, however, prohibit serving up right. contextual advertising on, on, uh, on, on child-directed websites. So advertising will continue on Google, but it just cannot be targeted based on the, based on the user's behavior. But, Andrew, there are a number of other measures that some 
critics have suggested you guys could have taken, such as an eraser button that would have required uh, YouTube to delete all of the data it's collected so far, annual audits of the company, uh, also reviewing, requiring the company to review any new kids' content that is posted to its site. Were any of those even on the negotiating table? So let's take them one by one. The first was a content eraser, right? So this order prohibits Google from using any of the data that it collected for any purpose, even a purpose that would be permitted under COPPA. Um, the second question was, uh, I'm just sorry, refresh my recollection. The second question was there were many other measures that you guys right. have taken, um, but I understand that you guys feel that this was a strong, game-changing settlement. Andrew, thank you so much for your time. Thank you.